I just had completely fallen out of love with the only thing I ever loved. What's up, everyone? Shaquille Mac Judy here, and you know who this is. She has won world titles everywhere from TNA, Ring of Honor, AAA, and beyond. She looks to do the same in all elite wrestling. A woman as proficient in grappling as I am proficient in complicating my life. Yana <laughs> Perrazzo, the virtuosa. How's it going? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Um, great to do this. So stoked to talk to you. Um, how are we feeling coming out of Double or Nothing? Five year anniversary for AEW. Yeah. Uh, how's the week shaping up? You know what? I was victorious against Thunder Rosa. Um, I feel great. I feel great. Before we dig into all the wrestling, uh, I always put out a fan Q&A, and this was by far one of the most requested questions, so we're going to throw it to the people. Okay. Where in New Jersey makes the best cannoli? Ooh, that's a really great question, because I'm going to get a lot of flack for this, but I'm not a cannoli girl. Um it's not my favorite pastry. Um, you can get really great ones, though, at Calandra's Bakery. Um, and I, the town that it's in is escaping me right now. But Calandra's Bakery. Okay, shout out. What's like an underrated pastry that people don't give enough love to? Ooh. Um, I'm trying to think. I mean, I'm always good for like a fruit tart. Like, okay. I don't need anything okay. special. Um, I don't know. Great question. You threw me for a loop I don't know. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, we got to try and uh, circumnavigate expectations a bit. That's what we like to do here. Uh, let's talk a little bit about something that uh, is more on topic, more expected. AEW, you know, Tony Khan always loves to sort of emphasize the strength of the roster, and it is arguably the best roster in pro wrestling. Some fans will agree, some fans won't. That's the fun of it. For you, having come in and immediately sort of inserted into the title picture and now uh, still active, still have storylines going on, AW's programming tends to sort of be like a revolving door where some talent are spotlighted, then they sort of move on to some other stuff, maybe Ring of Honor, maybe Rampage, whatever it is. For you, how has it been a few months in settling into such a competitive environment when it comes to the wealth of talent? Yeah, I, I feel like coming in so strong and um, wrestling Tony Storm for the AW Women's World Championship at Revolution. Tony tapped out, so I still have some kind of claim to I should be the AW Women's World Championship. Um, and then kind of veering off, I feel like, is a really great thing. You know, I've not disappeared from our programming, um, you know, on, on a week-to-week -week basis. I could be on Dynamite. I could be on Rampage. I could be on Collision. Um, and I feel like there's more women in the mix. I'm currently in a story with, with Thunder Rosa that's totally a non-title storyline, and that's really big. Um, so we're highlighting so many women across all of these shows, and and I'm just really grateful to like be a part of that, to be a part of the strengthening of this division and um, putting more eyes on, on women who aren't particularly featured in just a championship storyline. Yeah, I, I think sort of expanding the storylines outside of just the title picture is so important. Um, on that note, I guess, I know that the triple threat three-way dance with Chelsea Green and Britt Baker is always like the dream match, but what's a realistic dream opponent and stipulation that we could see for you on AEW programming in the next 12 months if you really had it your way? Um, Opponent-wise, I feel like there's so many, and there's so many matches um, between women on our roster that like I've never had before. I've never wrestled Chris Statlander before. Um, uh, it's been a really long time since I've wrestled Sky Blue. It's been a really long time, years and years, since I've wrestled Willow Nightingale. So those are just some people off the top of my head. Obviously, we've seen Mercedes Monet become the TBS champion. Mm -hmm. So um, that a shot at that championship is something that I'd be game for. But in terms of stipulation, I feel like um, a submission match is right up my alley. So that is always my number one. Um, I feel like maybe me and Thunder Rosa are gearing up towards that. Like I could see a stipulation for the rubber match between us. And I feel like a two out of three falls is cool. I feel like um, I had pitched years and years ago in TNA uh, to do like a um, – a Texas bull rope match or something like that. So oh, that'd be sick. Yeah, there's a lot of really cool stipulations that women have yet to do across all of pro wrestling that I feel like could be could make a really cool like first time ever for AEW. 
You know, I feel like we haven't seen like a best of five or best of seven series yet, but you and Serena Deeb over a course of matches, I think would just be magical. Yeah. Just, there's my, there's my creative <laughs> tips there. Um, one thing I really appreciate about the reputation you built in TNA and the one you carried forward with you in AEW was this desire to uh, protect the image that you have crafted for yourself as the virtuoso, particularly after the NXT and WWE run. When it comes to negotiating with promotions, whether that was going to TNA, uh, signing with AEW, what sort of assurances do you need about your presentation and direction before you commit? Because obviously you've done, you've proven that you can do a lot with yourself when given that creative freedom. Yeah, I think it was different coming into AEW. I was a completely different person than when I started with then Impact Wrestling, now TNA. Um, I was just off of being released from NXT, kind of not doing anything. And like, honestly, I was in a really weird personal space that I didn't even know if I wanted to keep wrestling at that point. Um, I just had completely fallen out of love with the only thing I ever loved. So it was a really weird, like, who, I don't even know who I am anymore. And when I spoke to Scott Demore, and this was, you know, back April 2020, um, he was, we just kind of had like a, a really good understanding of the place that I was in and we were just going to feel it out and see how I felt coming in. And, and if it was going to be long-term, then we'd talk later down the road. Um, so I didn't really have any assurances. I didn't know how I was going to present myself, like, but I did send to him something that I had written up while I was in NXT, a whole character synopsis of what I thought the virtuosa could be, how I thought she could be presented. And um, once he got that, we, uh, a few weeks later, were filming my first set of TVs and he was like, mm -hmm. awesome. We want to use the vignette that I had filmed for myself um, that NXT hadn't done anything with. And we're going to do some stuff. Um, that we're gonna put together for you. So it was kind of just like a free flow kind of thing. Like I didn't have any assurances. I didn't know I was coming in and going to work with the champion right away. I didn't know I was gonna become champion right away. It was really just like a, we're gonna see. So fast forward through, you know, three and a half years to come to AW and start there. I, I kind of am in the same, I, I wasn't in the same position, but I didn't set any expectations. I didn't say like, I need to be in the world title picture. I need to wrestle the champion. like. All I had asked was that the virtuosa Deanna Perrazzo be my intellectual property. I keep her because I created her. And um, that was really my only ask was, was in terms of who I am going to be presented, um, who I'm going to present on your television screen. This is who I've built for my career. This is who I am. It's like, she's a part of me. So that, this is who I need to be. And uh, that was my only, only ask. You mentioned Scott Demore. That reminds me of a headline that I, I hope I'm not mistaken uh, that I read over the last couple of days of Will Ospreay saying if there's one thing he could really push for in AEW is having Scott Demore come in in some sort of capacity, whether that be running Ring of Honor or something else. Um, yeah. How big of a boon do you think it would be for AEW to link up with Scott Demore? I, I that would be invaluable. I think um, obviously I have such a great relationship with Scott, and to to see him leave TNA just as TNA was being rebuilt and repackaged, um, I think was a blow to everybody, even though I wasn't there. And the one thing that that Scott really held close to his heart was the knockouts division and he wanted us to be, be presented with dignity and integrity and and character development and storylines. I mean, the women have endless possibility um, under his under his reign at, at TNA or Impact. So I think that he would definitely cultivate that and continue to grow our, our whether it's the women's division on Dynamite or Rampage or Ring of Honor, like he just cares so much about women's wrestling and the presentation of it that I think he would be an invaluable asset um, in any capacity here at AEW. You talked about your sort of rediscovery self-rediscovery during the TNA era, the Impact era, and I had one fan question who's, I, I guess this viewer has been really, you know, enjoying and following your career for a while, and so I kind of wanted to read it a little bit more verbatim than I normally would, but uh, they said that they remembered watching you on the indies and were just blown away by your work, and that after you left NXT, it seemed like it took some time for you to get your stride back, get your confidence back, it sounds yeah. like you kind of feel that way. Um, do you remember the moment that it clicked again for you that like, you're like, yes, I'm, I'm back in on this. Um, I, I, I think it was Slammiversary 
2020 uh, when I became the Knockouts World Champion. I think that that felt like the most pressured situation I had ever been in because I was in this weird space of I don't know who I am if I want to wrestle anymore. But also I had like went and done an entire media tour where I criticized NXT for how they used me and and how they treated me um, and that I thought I had more to bring to the table. And so now it was time to like put up or shut up. And um, I put so much pressure on myself going into that match to make it my make it moment. I was going to make it or I was going to break it. And I really think what Jordan and uh, Jordan Grace and I did that night and becoming the Knockouts World Champion um, solidified that I was correct in betting on myself, that I was correct in, in the way I felt leaving NXT and kind of set me on the path that I was on um, for the rest of my tenure at, at Impact. You mentioned uh, Jordan Grace. She recently appeared at NXT Battleground. Yeah. Just uh, obviously you have Steve Macklin there, um, your husband. Uh, what's it like even just as a former? For me, it's just kind of trippy to see any sort of working relationship there, especially when I think of guys like AJ Styles. Uh, what has it like been for you, just even on the outside, just sort of seeing that relationship build there between those two promotions? Yeah, it's crazy. I feel like WWE in any capacity working with another company is not something like anyone would ever have on their bingo card in any year. Um, so to see, and you know, Jordan did the Royal Rumble and, but to see that, that relationship continue to grow, I think just opens everybody's minds for all of the possibilities to come, whether it's just a Jordan thing or if it's a knockouts division thing, or if it's the entire roster thing, um, you know, just speaking on, you know, what my husband's thoughts are and like, he was like, oh, wow, Like I could go back to the place that I learned how to wrestle. He was in NXT's system for seven years. So he's like the possibility to go back after I've really defined myself here. And just that's a wild thought. So I'm really excited for all, all of the roster. But, you know, of course, my, my closest friends, Jordan Grace, my husband, Steve Macklin, to possibly get those opportunities and to see where this leads them. Have you ever trained or met Yoshiaki Fujiwara? No. <laughs> I feel like that's a crossover that needs to happen. Oh, that would be really cool, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, with Forbidden Door coming up, is there some sort of crossover match with someone from like New Japan or CMLL that would really be a highlight for you? Yeah, um, you know, my I've said this a few times. I would love to wrestle Mayu Iwatani again. Um, it's been a really long time since we went one-on-one, -on -one, and she beat me the last time to kick me out of a championship tournament. So I feel like I hold grudges, and um, I would love to get in the ring with her again. Um, someone else that I wrestled last year in a four-way was um, Momo from Stardom, and um, she was awesome. So that was like a four-way kind of stipulation. I'd love to do that again in a singles match. As, uh, you know, obviously the championship aspirations are yours and every woman's on the division. How did it feel to see Mercedes Monet, someone, I mean, so immensely accoladed and popular among the pro wrestling fans and beyond? Um, what did it feel like for you to see her sort of validate AEW further by getting gold around her waist? Yeah, I, I feel like it was almost validating herself again too. You know, like she's such a strong presence in our division and she brings so much more attention and eyes and, and fans to our division. But um, I think she's kind of went through that same personal journey that I talked about earlier for myself of, of can I still do this? Am I still good at this? Can I do this at the same level that I did before and, and in a new place with new people I don't know? And um, to see her and Willow absolutely smash it. Like they, it was, phenomenal what they did at double or nothing um i think validated that same for us it validated her but i think it validated it for herself again and sometimes that's more important i saw one prominent pro wrestling voice say that like willow got exposed in that match I'm like what what were you watching <laughs> that was... I can't, I can't. Like, what are you talking that was that was art that was just about my match of the night like right and and you know what i feel like Mercedes has been there and done it all. She's main evented WrestleManias and she's coming into a, a brand new division with new girls who she's never touched before and she's elevating all of us too. So there's no exposing anybody in this situation, only elevating them. And I just, the internet sometimes just drives me insane. I can't, I can't because it, it gives everyone a uh, Oh my God. And sometimes their opinions is just flat out BS. 
I, I just published a, a feature that I did with Tony Khan, and one of the topics prevalent in that was breaking down what it would look like or the pros and cons of moving AEW Dynamite to three hours long term. And when I tell you there were hundreds of people arguing, either saying Tony Khan's a genius or Tony Khan is an idiot for doing this. And I'm like, guys, he didn't do anything. I asked him a question and he broke down the possibilities and you did right. not read the article. You hardly read the word potential in the headline. Alas, oh. alas. I, I, I just want you to know I share your stress and I hope you're spending <laughs> less time online. I'm trying to and I'm not working. Yeah, yeah, same. <laughs> it, it, as we begin to wrap up here, uh, if you had it your way, can you break down how you might book a debut for a female version of The Shield with you and Rachel Ellering and Chelsea Green? Oh, my gosh. We practiced this endlessly. Um, and there was no way we were going to be able to, like, come through the crowd like The Shield did. But uh, we had, like, one person, like, if this is the whole stage, one person coming from here, one from here, and one down the middle. And, like, the music we had picked did, like, like there was almost spotlights. It was like, bam, bam, bam. And it was, like, you know, one, two, three, and then all of us together. And um, I have the videos somewhere in my phone that we had them record at the PC. And, and we thought we had something really cool going. So I'm really sad that we never got to, like, see the full VXT come to life. Um, but on the flip side of that, me and Chelsea Green did have a really great run as Vex in TNA. So I can't complain too much. Mm -hmm. But if our vision had come to life, I think it would have been really, really cool. Well, and who knows? Maybe some visions that we can uh, work through down the road here in AEW. <laughs> maybe. Um, one thing. Sorry to, sorry to drag this back to the down times. I just found this so remarkably absurd. What reason did the WWE give you for having you work security at a metal <laughs> detector as a contracted wrestling talent? Um, I don't think I was ever given a reason. I think that's just part of, you know, paying your dues and getting to know the system. And um, <laughs> that was also kind of part of the problem, right? It's like, mm -hmm. I, I am a pretty well-established independent wrestler. And... Um, I just thought that wasn't the job for me. You know, I'm very happy to pay my dues in other ways, very happy to like, you know, do whatever it is, but maybe wanding people at the door who know me isn't for me. Maybe sitting ringside and collecting gear isn't the job for me. Um, but I, I never got a reason. I think it was just part of like showing respect and doing what everyone else had done in the past. I just feel like there's like whole swaths of security details that are contracted to do exactly these kind of things. But alas, um, yep. <laughs> on a brighter note, before we finish on some rapid fire, where yeah. would you rank sort of the rebirth of Rose women, Ring of Honor's women's division among your career accomplishments? First match in almost a decade at the time. Oh, my gosh. Um, it's got to be a t top 10 for sure. Um I feel like coupled with that, like top five is becoming the Ring of Honor Women's World Champion mm -hmm. um, in 2022. And and then, yeah, top five also carrying that Ring of Honor Women's World Championship into the main event of Dynamite as a non-AW contracted talent. Um, that championship and that Women of Honor division holds such a special place in my heart that like I can't even describe to you how proud I am uh, to see where the women are. Um, WrestleMania weekend, Super Card of Honor, there was three, four women's matches. There was multiple women's matches on the show. There was pre-show match. And then, you know, I think it was three women's matches on the card. And I had to go because my little Ring of Honor, Women of Honor heart was so happy um, to see what I fought for and what, you know, a lot of us girls fought for uh, kind of come to life and thrive is Yes, it has to be top 10 of my career accomplishments for sure. Diana, you've been so gracious with your time. Before I let you go here, I do want to just run you through some rapid fire, some wrestling stuff, some non-wrestling stuff. Ready to go? I think so. All right. First off, if Diana is the virtuosa of pro wrestling, who is its virtuoso? Um, <laughs> Robert Evans, uh, who is, it was... And I always told him he's the virtuoso uh, because he helped create the virtuosa in TNA. He's one of the head creative writers there. Um, he is the virtuoso of pro wrestling. Okay, I like I like some uh, well indebted, uh, <laughs> you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Shout outs there. What is one true stereotype about being a twin? 
we do have like twin telepathy for sure what's uh how, how does that usually manifest like um not so much as we've gotten older but when we were younger i was a cheerleader and my brother played football for the team I was the cheerleader for and like we would have like weird similar injuries or like I would get like weird pain in my elbow and he'd come back after the game and be like oh I really hit my elbow like really we <laughs> were connected when we were younger about things like that or even like way back when we were young my brother um was born with um like uh cysts over his eardrums so okay. Um, he wasn't fully deaf, but he was partially until they got removed and drained and stuff. And my mom always tells the story that if he needed something, obviously he couldn't speak clearly and she didn't understand. I always was able to understand and be like, oh, he wants the water bottle. Oh, he wants to eat this. Um, so even when we were little, 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 Aww. we could still communicate like that. Oh, that's adorable. I like that. Uh, who are the four greatest female technical wrestlers? Oh, Deanna, 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 Deanna. Uh, <laughs> you know what um i feel like you have to put mercedes up there her submission game is on par i feel like becky lynch has to be up there um with the arm bar um i don't know that's a really great question i wasn't prepared for that either <laughs> okay, that's okay. well you know you gotta, you gotta, like i said you gotta give a little bit of everything i mean if we're going if it's all gonna be arm bars i guess we can just throw ronda rousey in there oh about yeah legitimate, uh, great arm that's, that's given for sure and she's more credible than all of us so <laughs> That's true. This is true. This is fair. I, I appreciate that. Um, in what way are you and Steve Matt? Sorry? Shayna Baszler has got to be in there, too. Oh, I mean, my God. Oh, okay. UFC well, fighters. fighters. I need Come to on. start expanding this list. I'm, oh, if, and then there's a whole bunch of other MMA fighters who've transitioned. Um, in what ways are you and Steve Macklin the most stereotypical New Jersey couple? Uh, I feel like because we're like... We like proudly tell everybody we are from New Jersey. And I like to tell the story of like, they're like, oh, where are you guys from? We're both from New Jersey. We grew up 30 minutes from each other. And um, like, um, we just love to like promote the fact that we're from New Jersey. I had to travel the world to find a Jersey guy. Like being proud of being New Jerseyans, I feel like is the most New Jersey thing that we do. And, and we are. I am... Um... Not ashamed to admit that uh, the Jersey Shore reality show was an obsession of mine as a teenager. <laughs> yeah. How do people from New Jersey feel about it? You know what? I feel like there's like me who loves the Jersey Shore. I love the Jersey Shore. Like I can't wait for the day and I manifest it all the time to like meet Snooki and Jay Wild. Like I love Jersey Shore. But then there's like my my aunts and my uncles who were like they're disrespecting our culture and they're bad representations of Italian Americans and um so I loved it I loved it uh but then there's the flip side of yeah you're you're stereotypical Italian Americans and that's not who we are and a lot of them aren't from Jersey so I feel like Jersey got bad flack for that too but I loved it all right well good I'm glad we're on the same page that we can uh... <laughs> geek out about it later a uh, last one and i'll let you go here diana um i think if i'm if your twitter bio is true the thing closest to your arm bar expertise might be uh your history knowledge yes so i would like you to tell me your best history fun fact to uh close Ooh, out here i tell everybody this my best history fun fact is that um during the like after World War II ended, um, you know, there had been the Cold War and people talked about the usage of nuclear bombs and, and the negative side effects. The only, It's such a taboo thing um, because the only reason they haven't been used since was because how negatively it would have looked upon the user. Not the, the negative side effects, not the destruction it caused and, and all that kind of stuff. It was, um, do we use this and how would it make us look? I'm I'm giggling because one of the most upvoted comments in that Q&A thread was just ask her about the Cold War. So I'm <laughs> glad even unintentionally I could give the people what they asked for. That is what I wrote my like my thesis on. That's what I graduated on was presidential nuclear rhetoric of the Cold War. So um, I'm a big nuclear war nerd, I guess. I don't well, that's such a hilarious niche. I love that. I'm glad we could uh, cover our bases here today. Dion, yeah. I want to leave you with the last word. So very quickly for me, guys, thanks so much for checking out the video. Subscribe, tap the bell, thumbs up, all that good stuff. 
let us know what is your dream Deanna Perrazzo match that we could see in the next calendar year. Deanna, if there's anything you want to tell the people on the way out, the floor is yours. Yeah, um, I just always want to give a thank you. Um, doing these types of interviews, my career being 12 years long this year, um, couldn't be possible without the fan support and how much they've shown me love um, throughout my entire career. So thank you guys so much for sticking with me and there's so much more to come.